So here we go again as we get closer to the debate between President Biden and Donald Trump, which is taking place next week. Donald Trump is sending his surrogates like his daughter-in-law and his son to go on the various networks or on their various shows and put out the message that the reason Donald Trump's likely to lose the debate is because President Biden is going to be jacked up on drugs and these performance enhancing drugs are going to make President Biden perform better than Donald Trump. Now, this is the preemptive frame of a loser. This is the preemptive frame of fascism. What Donald Trump and the MAGA Republican media and propaganda media recognizes is that all of the things they say about Donald Trump to try to hoist him up as being powerful is all false. And they also know that all of the things they say about President Biden is false. So they have to search for a justification. Why is it that at the State of the Union, why is it that when Americans tune in for President Biden's speeches and actually watch the speeches in their full context, why is it that when President Biden debates Donald Trump like he did in 2020 and won both of those debates, why is it that President Biden performs better than what the media narrative is? And the answer is, is because the media narrative is all propaganda and it's all false. But then they tried to justify it in a heads I win, tails you lose by basically saying President Biden's cheating. He's on drugs and that's why he performs better at the debates. Have you ever heard that framing before? I mean, think about debate class, think about high school, think about college, think about wherever you've participated in discussion. Have you ever thought, wow, that debater right there, I think they may, they may be on some performance enhancing drugs. That's why they're performing so well at the debate. It's an absolutely absurd type of framing, but this is what you get from the modern day Republican Party. So let me give you the examples. This is the co-chair of the RNC, Donald Trump's daughter-in-law, going on Hannity last night and pushing this message out with Hannity that President Biden's going to be on drugs. Watch this. The former president, you know, took on the challenge. I don't think he'll regret it. However, the Joe Biden that we're talking about tonight, I don't think will be the Joe Biden we're going to see on debate night. I think the Joe Biden we see on debate night is going to be the guy that we saw at the State of the Union. He's going to be all hyped up. Caf, you know, hyper caffeinated, whatever it is. It's in interesting that 70% of the country does like the idea of drug testing. I like the idea. Uh, they do it to athletes. They do it to horses and horse racing. Why not do it to presidential candidates? I like the idea. 70% uh, of Americans apparently agree with me. However, what do you expect for the debate? Yeah, well, this is nothing new, of course. The cards have always been stacked against Donald Trump since the day he came down the escalator to announce he was running for president as a Republican. Then Donald Trump had his son last night, Don Jr., do the same thing. In fact, you had Don Jr. interview Donald Trump's doctor, Ronnie Jackson, who Donald Trump called Ronnie Johnson over the weekend. Remember when Donald Trump said, Dr. Ronnie Johnson, everybody know Johnson? It's Jackson. He gives me these, these cognitive tests. I ace them, right? Right, Ronnie Johnson, right? I mean, Donald Trump goes around in the country talking about passing dementia tests all the time. And when he did it this weekend, he got the name of his own doctor wrong while saying it. But here you have Don Jr. and Dr. Ronnie Jackson. And Dr. Ronnie Jackson, you'll hear, talks about, oh, well, I think Biden's going to be on ProVigil. I think he's going to be on some uh, a, a regimen of drugs now. I want to show you this clip, but then what I also want to point out to you is I think the very important fact that there were over uh, 4,180 tabs that we know of of Provigil that were handed out like candy at the White House when Donald Trump was disgracing the Oval Office. We also know that there were fentanyl patches, Versed, which is the date rape drug, ketamine. Um, we know that there was uh, hydrocodone, morphine, and other very hard drugs that was being prescribed by like candy at the White House. This was all uncovered as part of a Department of Defense uh, Inspector General investigation. We, we quite literally have the logs. So again, it's all projection and confession with these MAGAs. So this was from the other day. Here you have Dr. Ronnie Jackson accusing President Biden of being on provigil 
with Don Jr. Here, play this clip. I really think like our only request, I don't even care if he sits down, but our only request should be like to drug test him, you know, right after it. Uh, I mean, I think the American people would deserve to know, you know, what would be in his system to perhaps get him to function shortly. Because like that is a 24 hour a day, seven day a week, 365 day a year job. It is not a I function for 15 minutes or half an hour because someone jacked me up with something uh, to artificially make me feel present. You know, as a doctor, you know, what sort of cocktail uh, you know, could they put together for him in this debate? I mean, h- how does that work? I-, I assume that exists. I'm not a I'm not a doctor, but it doesn't seem like that would be uh, too hard to pull off. And it also doesn't seem like the Democrats wouldn't be totally willing to do that to get you know artificial results. And it, it seems like it'd actually be exactly what they would do. Well, I think they've been experimenting with it for a while. You know, we saw something going on during the State of the Union. I don't think it worked out exactly the way they wanted it to because he was awake and alert, but he was just a screaming, angry old man, right? He still wasn't making any sense. Uh, so I don't know that that's a better look than, you know, what they've got now. But on, there's some of these medications that are out there that help you with your cognitive ability, you know, to think a little clearer. Now, none of them will do it for, you know, long term. They all just are short term effects and they become less and less effective as time goes on. But those are drugs that were engineered for cognitive issues. Uh, you know, like Aricept and things like that for Parkinson's and Alzheimer's and some of those other uh, uh, cognitive disorders that, you know, you see, uh, you know, folks, uh, you know, they see the advertisements on TV and stuff. So some of those are drugs that are engineered to try to help with your cognition. Some of them are just to make you more awake. You know, there's the amphetamine type drugs like Adderall and things of that nature. And then there's things like ProVigil. Uh, you know, they're also just increase your alertness and stuff. So I think they're probably trying to find just the right mix of stuff that can, you know, that can wake him up and make him a little bit more alert and a little bit more with it. And then something that hopefully will last long enough to make it through the debate. I think that's a big challenge for him. Uh, and I think that uh, the State of the Union, uh, you know, we saw he was on something, but I don't think it I don't think it worked out the way they wanted it to. So uh, I, I don't know. I don't know how they're tweaking it, but it'll be something. Yeah, I mean, you've been now, you, you know what ProVigil is for those who don't. ProVigil is a stimulant used to treat excessive sleepiness caused by narcolepsy, obstructive sleep apnea and shift work. Now, we all know what Donald Trump was doing at his criminal trial where he became a convicted felon 34 times over. He continued to fall asleep over and over again. And then Dr. Ronnie Jackson, or perhaps it was Dr. Ronnie Johnson, would visit Donald Trump. And then you could sometimes notice that there are some changes to Donald Trump after he gets a visit from who some people call the candy man. But just take a look at those logs one more time so you can see for yourself the type of hard drugs that were being prescribed by candy at the Trump White House, fentanyl patches. Versed, morphine, ketamine just floating around the White House. It's just another example of the failures of the media that that's not like the biggest story that, that there is. But don't worry, we'll stay on top of it here at the Midas Touch Network. But just so you can see too the pattern of these accusations against President Biden as well, take a look. I'm going to show you another interview between Don Jr., and Dr. Ronnie Jackson. This is from January. So this is several months back, about five months ago. What you'll notice is the Chiron is recycled. It's the exact same Chiron from the interview that Don Jr. did yesterday because they just pushed the same thing. It's a copy and paste job. It's It's all a ruse. And watch what they say then in January. Same type of thing. Here, play this clip. The American, can the American public, is there a way to subpoena, uh, you know, what, if they're giving him something to stay cognitive? Because it feels to me like when I watch him at a, what would be, he doesn't do many, right? It's not like Trump will get up there for 45 minutes, an hour, two hours and speak. You know, it's always very concise. Kurt, Katice, boy, they cut it down. Time to go. Everyone get out of the room. But it does feel like if it goes on for more than a few minutes, you see everything like wears off. I mean, is there a way for the American people to find out? Because I think they have a right to know if their president is being just, you know, artificially jacked up by some sort of medication to create the illusion that there's some coherence. Again, I think it fades very quickly. You know, and this is just a classic MAGA example of heads, I win, tails, you lose. Right. They go on and they spread these lies about President Biden. Oh, he's meandering. He's talking to himself. He can't do this. He can't do look. 
President Biden rides bikes. President Biden exercises. If you watch President Biden on the State of the Union, he's great. If you watch the full speeches that we post here of President Biden, he's great. If you see President Biden debate like he beat Donald Trump twice in 2020 and one of the times Donald Trump uh, like hid that he had COVID to try to spread his COVID around. I mean, no, that doesn't get enough attention either. Trump backed out of the third debate. The reason that this exists is because President Biden is intelligent and smart. And yes, President Biden may be on the older side, but since when are we accepting ageist tropes and just and and not respecting elders and not treating people who are older with respect. I mean, the ageism here is just off the charts, number one. But President Biden is intelligent and smart and speaks in coherent sentences. He occasionally will stutter, um, but he's had a lifelong stuttering issue, which he's talked about. But it's not talking to imaginary cannibal lector friends like President Biden's good. So they have to come up with a frame to justify the fact that they're feeding all of this false information to the public. And their frame is drugs, cheating, rigged, unfair. President Biden's cheating. And that to me is also part of just the 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 absurdness and just the uh, how embarrassing this modern day Republican Party is. That they used to be the pull yourself up by the bootstraps. Now they just lie and then they whine over and over again. I mean, here, I could show you dozens of clips like this, but here's Donald Trump going out in his various speeches and saying that he thinks that Biden's going to be on drugs. There needs to be drug tests. Here, play this clip. Can't find his way off the stage. Can't put two sentences together, although he has agreed to debate. So I don't know. Maybe they know something. He's going to be so jacked up for those debates. You watch. <laughs> And then after the State of the Union, Donald Trump went out and said, oh, the reason that he did, he was like that on State of the Union is drugs. He was jacked up. We don't know what's going on. He must be jacked up on drugs. Here, play this clip. Gets up and makes a speech the other day. He's screaming at everybody like a lunatic. And everybody said, oh, he made it. You know, he made it. He made it through, barely. He made it through the speech. And he was all jacked up. And you just wonder what's going on. This is a very dangerous time for our country. And again, all of this is to cover up as well the fact that Donald Trump has major cognitive issues, major cognitive issues. He talks to imaginary people on the stage. He talks about being electrocuted versus eaten by sharks. I mean, heck, here's a new interview from Raman Sedota, uh, editor at Variety, who just wrote a book on Donald Trump and how Donald Trump, uh, can, you know, the book is how The Apprentice led to Donald Trump getting into office. But anyway, he, he, here's someone who's interviewed Donald Trump recently multiple times. He was just on Morning Joe. Here's what Raman had to say about Donald. Play this clip. The other thing that I think is really interesting, because I really got to know Donald Trump post-presidency, and I got to see what he was like. And over the weekend, he was talking about how Joe Biden needs to take a cognitive test. Joe Biden, you know, isn't all there. Donald Trump had severe memory issues. As the journalist who spent the most time with him, I have to say he couldn't remember things. He couldn't even remember me. We spent an hour together in 2021 in May. And then a few months later, I went back to the White House, to the, uh, I went back to Trump Tower to talk to him about his time in the White House. And he had, I said, he, you know, he had this vacant look on his face. And I said, do you remember me? And he said, no, he had no recollection of our lengthy interview that we had. And he wasn't doing a lot of interviews at that time. So I think that the American public really needs to see this portrait of Donald Trump because this shows what he is like and who he is and who he has always been. And I want to show you this too. This is Dr. David Shiner, Obama's former doctor, but well, world renowned doctor, Dr. Shiner. Who, this is an interview from 2019, I'm playing you. When Donald Trump was whisked away to the hospital, no one knows why the Trump White House covered it up when Trump went to the hospital. Um, and here you have Dr. Shiner um, saying, look, there's something seriously wrong with Trump's cognitive functioning right now. Like, it's obvious to me as a doctor. Here, play this clip. So he has got some real uh, risk factors. His inability to say words sometimes worries me tremendously. He is having trouble word finding when he said United States instead of United States. These aren't words, these aren't slips of the tongue. These are words he can't find them. And this is happening over and over again. Comedians joke about it, but it's not a joking matter. I think there is a, a neurological issue that is not being addressed. 
And if he had an MRI of his head over there, I would be uh, very pleased because I think he needs it. And then finally, you have Donald Trump saying this, that he's going to lose the debates on purpose. That's one of the new ones. We're going to lose the debates on purpose, he says. Play the clip. Hey, so I'll lose the debate on purpose. Maybe I'll do something like that. You know, but anyway, it, it, it's just it's really pathetic. Just I've never seen a group of people whine so much over and over again about everything and everything's rigged. Everything's a lie. Everything. You're, you, this one's unjust. That's one. And then you go to the data and you see what they're actually doing. And it's like, oh, Provigil, you prescribed 4,180 tabs of Provigil at the White House that we know about and probably more. You were giving fentanyl patches and ketamine out. Oh, got it. So everything you say is something that y'all are doing? Everything. <laughs> Hit subscribe. We're on our way to 3 million thanks to your support. Enough! Send it to the big house, not the White House. Get the new exclusive tees, mugs, and stickers right now at store.midastouch.com. That's store.midastouch.com.